in this video, I want to talk a little bit about glycogen, its structure and its function, why we care about it, what's important about it, things to know. So glycogen, as we mentioned before when we talked about carbohydrates, is a polysaccharide of many alpha-D-glucoses, specifically a polysaccharide of alpha-D-glucoses linked by alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Um, what is glycogen's function? Glycogen is basically a storage form of glucose. It's a way to store glucose. Um, where in, in our bodies is it stored? Where is the glycogen located? It's located primarily in the liver and muscle. So basically, it stores muscle or stores glucose in a chain like this that I'll get to in just a second for for energy that we can use. So if there's too little blood or too little glucose in our cell, there's not enough, and we need to free up some glucose, then our bodies can take start breaking down glycogen, free up glucoses that our cell can use. Or if there's too much glucose around, then our body can store that glucose in the form of glycogen. Now, is it a form of long-term or short-term storage? Depending on who you ask, you might get different answers. But the way I like to look at it is that it's a short-term form of storage. And the reason why is typically your body will tap on three things for energy. Glucose in the blood, or that can just be taken up by your cell, or glycogen, or fat. And Glucose is the first thing that, that, that is used because it can be readily tapped on and go straight into glycolysis. The next thing that can, you know, almost as quickly be metabolized is glycogen. You just free up glucoses and then you use those in glycolysis. But fat takes a little bit more time, a few more steps to actually get, get going. So I would, I would consider fat the more of the long-term storage form of energy, whereas glycogen is a short-term, but it's not the shortest-term form of uh, energy storage. Anyway, what's its structure like? We already said that it's connected in a chain by alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, and that's actually what I've drawn here. So, if you already recall, these are alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, right, where the one carbon is connected to the fourth carbon um, in, in just a, in a chain by alpha linkages, right? Here's a 1,4 linkage, here's a 1,4 linkage. But now, it's not just one long chain. Glycogen has branches, and specifically these branches are via alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages. That's what I actually what I've drawn here. The one carbon, the anomeric carbon, is connected to the CH2OH on another glucose. That's part of another glycogen chain. So this is an alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so... So these, these linkages allow car, uh, glycogen to be branched. Now, um, before I go on, I want to talk about the ends of a glycogen chain. So if we imagine this, just this glycogen chain, as opposed to this, this branch being included, there are two ends. There is this end with the free OH at, the, at this particular carbon, which we, if you recall, is called the anomeric carbon. So if the end that has the free anomeric carbon is considered the the reducing end. So a sugar, basically we talked about it earlier about how a sugar with a, a free OH group at its anomeric carbon is considered a reducing sugar and that basically means that it can exist in equilibrium with the open chain um, aldehyde or ketone form whereas the non-reducing end, this end here, um, the non-reducing ends um, cannot cannot exist in the open chain form because because of the um, the acetal that, that is formed, this, this alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage. So these ends here are considered the non-reducing ends. Okay, and, oops, non-reducing end. Now, why is this branching important for glycogen? It's highly branched. I only drew one branch here, but you can imagine that this chain is much, much longer. There are tons of these branch points. So why is this important? The reason why is because uh, if we want to take off, if we want to break down glycogen and um, you know free up glucoses, we're going to take them off of the non-reducing ends. So if it was only one long chain, then we could only take off one glucose at a time. We would only have one glucose at the non-reducing end. But if we branch it, if we have these branch points here, then you can imagine that we have tons and tons of non-reducing ends. So there's many of them. And what that allows for, those many non-reducing ends, that allows for quick breakdown
um, allows for a quick breakdown of glycogen for uh, for glucose, right, to free up glucose um, that can go through glycolysis. So instead of just taking off one glucose at a time, I could take off this one, this one, and this one at the same time because I have two non-reducing ends. But in reality, glycogen is highly branched. There's many, many, many non-reducing ends as opposed to just one long chain. So that's it for the glycogen's structure and function. I hope that was a good introduction. Thank you for watching.